Hello, God bless you. Hope everyone's having a great day today. This is Brother David. Today we are in the book of James, chapter 3, verse 17, which says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Pure refers to spiritual integrity and moral sincerity. Every gentle Christian has this kind of heart motivation. Peaceable means peace, loving, peace promoted. Gentle means a character trait of sweet reasonableness. Such a person will submit to all kinds of difficulty with an attitude of kind, courteous, patient humility, without any thought of hatred or revenge. Entreated means willing to yield. The original term describes someone who is teachable, compliant, someone who willingly submits to military discipline or moral or legal standards. For believers, it defines obedience to God's standards, full of mercy, the gift of showing concern for those who suffer pain and hardship, and the ability to forgive quickly without hypocrisy. The Strong's Greek translates this to sincere. This denotes a constant, unwavering person who is undivided in his commitment and conviction and does not make unfair distinctions. Notice the word but at the beginning. It shows a direct contrast to earthly men. This shows those who have sold out for God. The wisdom from above comes to all believers. This wisdom is stored in the heart and is pure. Knowing of the security that is in Jesus brings peace. When we are at peace with God and men, we are gentle. If we expect God to be merciful to us, we must be merciful to others. Christians should bear good fruit. You cannot be a Christian and a hypocrite at the same time. A true Christian is 100% the Lord's. In the passage, James has been describing the so-called wisdom of the world. Typically, human philosophy is driven by envy and selfish ambitions. And the result is that all the disorder and evil that we see in the world, putting ourselves ahead of all others means creating billions of contradictory goals and making excuses for hurting other people in order to get what we want. But here James is describing the characteristics of the wisdom from heaven. This is God's wisdom, and this is the wisdom of those who trust in God to provide all that they need, to continue to give them every good gift, and to fulfill every desire of their hearts for eternity with him in heaven. As a result, the believer willingly sacrifices opportunities for more and more money, pleasure, power. Instead, those who trust in God make themselves available to serve the needs of others. The results of submission to God is very different than selfish worldly ambition. James describes goodly wisdom as pure. This means undivided. Kind of wisdom is refined and focused on exactly one thing, whatever God has called us to do. Godly wisdom is peaceable or peace-loving. It puts a high value on easing conflict. His wisdom is gentle or considerate, not ready to fight, but ready to serve. This wisdom is reasonable, ready to see things from someone else's point of view. True wisdom is full of mercy and good fruits, good things that flow from living this way. The wisdom is impartial, not showing favoritism. This wisdom is sincere, with no need to fake anything to get what it wants out of other people. And when you get to the point in your life where you trust the Lord for everything in your life, you begin to see how much easier and more pleasant life becomes when you give up the requirements of getting what you want at all costs. Without of that agenda, there's less and less need for conflict. And yet the only way to give up that agenda is to believe that our good God is providing all that we need at every moment. True wisdom that comes from above, this wisdom that comes from God, 
is so different from the wisdom that is found in the world. This is a gift from God. It is not what a person can achieve. It is not in this world. James describes what this wisdom is, is not. Now he shows what it is. He uses seven words to show what exactly this wisdom is like. Pure. It's clean and has no selfish ambitions. It is holy as God himself is holy. Peaceable, peacemaking. It brings people closer together and nearer to God. It does not want to fight, but it wants to bring peace. Gentle. It is fair and kind. It knows the weakness of human beings and helps them. It does not insist on its own rights. It is always ready to help and not to blame. It's easy to be entreated, open to reason. It is easy to approach it. It will listen to what other people say. It's full of mercy and good fruits. It helps those who suffer. It has sympathy for all those who are sad. It has pity and the love to do good for them and for all people. It's without partiality, fair to all. It shows respect for all people. It doesn't make distinctions. It does not do things from a prejudice. It is sure about what is true. It has a good standard that does not change. It's without hypocrisy. It's real and sincere. It is honest. It does not pretend or act apart. It is sincere in all that it does and with all people. It does not work for its own benefit. You see, in this world, all you will find is heartache, empty promises, because this world is going to offer you all kinds of pleasures, whatever they may be, sex, drugs, alcohol, money, friendship, power, popularity, houses, cars, money, whatever may entice you. But you see, it's like with drugs and alcohol. What happens? The high, the buzz, they wear off. You got to do it again or go to something else. All this world offers are empty promises. There is nothing in this world that will satisfy you. You see, we all have this missing peace in our life, this void that we try to fill. Everything the world has to offer, all these shiny things that it will try to distract you with, you will fill. It will never satisfy. It will never fill that void. And that void can only be filled by the Lord. That's why they call it a God-shaped hole. You see, this is the distinction that James is making in this chapter. Before, he, he talks about this worldly stuff. But here in this verse, he's talking about what God gives. And that's what we talked about a few Sundays ago. What God gives, this wisdom that's pure, peaceable, gentle, easily being treated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. This is only found in God. You can only find this by putting him first, making him the Lord and Savior of your life. Because you're not going to find it here. Because whether you admit it or not, we all live in this world. And we've all tried to live in this world, chasing after things. But they all fail every time. And yeah, you may hit rock bottom and you say you're going to change and go right back to where you're at. But when you truly just give yourself over to the Lord, you're going to see that what he has is not going to fail you. All you have to do is seek this, the promises that God gives, mercy, peace, joy, all this that the Lord has to offer. You see these characteristics, when you, do, when you see the meanings of them, they may sound a little weak to you. You know, because sometimes when somebody's wanting to say something to hurt us, we want to say something right back. That's part of, you know, the, the peace that God gives us. That we're, not, that we're just going to love that person more. We're not going to want to fight back with them. And that's hard. I'll be honest with you. Even as a Christian, having this, this in us, our flesh just still wants to fight. But it's about putting God first and what he wants for us. So for those of you who have made Jesus Lord of your life and you're seeking these promises of God, all you got to do is just grow deeper in your personal relationship with Jesus. And that's by praying, reading your Bible, getting in God's present worship and song, telling your testimony to others, just fellowshipping with other believers, encouraging one another. You'll start to grow in your relationship. You'll start to get these gifts these promises that God talks about, all you got to do is keep seeking Him. You know, just keep seeking Him in His Word, reading the Bible, and keep praying to Him. Just talk to Him like you talk to an old friend. Just don't hold anything back. Just share everything in your heart. Just seek Him. Allow Him to speak to you. Where you get to a place where all those stuff that this world's trying to distract you with, 
where you can get out of your mind, where you can just have time with you and God alone. And you just put God at the center of everything in your life. And when you put God at the center of everything in your life, you start walking in his will, seeking his will for your life, and dying to yourself daily, not doing what you want to do, but doing what he wants. You're seeking his purpose and his plan for your life. And you'll start to get these promises that he talked about. But if you've gotten this point of the video and you don't know Jesus today, then you're in the world chasing all the world has to offer. And it's failing you each and every time. It, yeah, it may work for a while, but it's going to fail you each and every time. Just like that alcohol and those drugs, the buzz and the high, they wear off. Everything this world is offering you is going to let you down. But I want to give you the opportunity to accept something that will never fail you. So if you've gotten this point in the video and you don't know Jesus today, now you may intellectually know who Jesus is. You may know what he did on the cross, but you don't know him personally. You don't take the time to talk to him, to pray, to read the Bible. Maybe you're playing games to God today. Maybe when, you're, when hard times are coming, you're not running to Jesus. It's because you don't know him personally. But I believe that you're here for a reason. I don't believe that you're here by accident. I believe that the Lord has given you one more opportunity to get to know him right now. And it may be your last opportunity because we don't know what tomorrow holds. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. You could die tonight. That's why I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. I want to show you who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross and what that means for you. So please do not turn off the video. Just keep listening. Listen to these words. Accept the words of the gospel of what Jesus did for you. Apply the words to your life. Allow the words to change you. And if you do, then you will start to receive the promises that God gives that will not fail you. Unlike the stuff that you're chasing in the world right now, that will fail you each and every time. What God will give you will not fail you. So the gospel, in a nutshell, is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, that made sin enter the world. And sin creates a wall that separates each and every one of us from God. And this is because all of us sin. And we all fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of our sin is death. Which means because we sin... Not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There's a punishment for sin. And because we sin, we all deserve to be punished. And we all deserve to be destroyed. We all deserve to be eternally separated from God forever. And that means a life in hell is what we deserve. But here's the mercy of God. God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus, who left his throne in heaven to come down to this earth, as a flesh and blood human, 100%, fully God and fully man, and he lived a perfect sinless life. Gave us an example, and on the cross, he became sin for us to pay for our sins, which means when Jesus was on that cross, he put our sins on himself like a garment. He took the punishment for our sins, because as I've said, there is a punishment. But we are the ones who sin. We are the ones who deserve to be punished. But instead of us being punished for what we do wrong, Jesus, who was innocent of death because he never sinned, he took our punishment, the punishment that we rightly deserve, Jesus took in our, that punishment in our place. You see, we're all like a garment that is stained with sin. But when we accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, when we accept the words of the gospel, when we apply the words to our life, when we allow these words to change us, then it's like we're putting a washing machine. We are washed clean with the precious blood of Jesus. We are washed white as snow. And when we believe the gospel message and are saved, when we apply the words to our life and allow them to change us, then we put on Jesus' righteousness like a garment. And now when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sin anymore. Now God sees Jesus. And then now we'll start to receive these promises that he brings that will never fail us, unlike the stuff from the world. The gospel message is Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day. And if you confess Jesus with your mouth, and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you will be saved. Whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And what will you be saved from? You'll be saved from an eternity in hell. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. Jesus is the door to enter heaven. There are not multiple ways to get into heaven. And no one else can save you. A preacher cannot deem you worthy. Your mom or dad can't confess you're a good person. Your works, your deeds cannot earn it. Salvation cannot be found in anyone else or anywhere else. Salvation can only be obtained by faith in Jesus Christ. 
You see Jesus' blood on the cross? It's our ticket. On the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. He took our punishment. And his blood is what bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down the wall that separates us from God. You see, in order to be atoned for sin, there has to be an offering of blood. But the blood of animals or whatever will not completely make you right with God. But God himself came in the flesh. He offered himself in our place. And his blood made that atonement so that now we can have a relationship with God. His blood redeemed us. It bought us back. It paid the ransom to free us from the power of sin. His blood freed us from an eternity in hell. And if you sincerely believe in Jesus and surrender your life to him, which means you're not saying words to please someone, not looking for a get out of hell free card because someone scared you, but you really do believe in who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross, and you truly want to live for him now because you've accepted the words of the gospel, you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you apply the words to your life and you allow the words to change you, then you will be saved. This is Jesus' free gift of grace that he's extended to you. All you have to do is reach out and grab it. Just accept it. Because you can't earn your way to heaven. You can't be a good enough person. You can't do enough good deeds. And when you're standing face to face with God, it's not going to matter how much you've given to charity. Or you think, I've been a good person. I never robbed or killed anybody. Because our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. The word says it's by grace that we are saved through faith. Not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. This grace is an unearned gift. We cannot earn it. We don't deserve it, which means we can't earn our way to heaven. We don't deserve to go to heaven. We don't deserve salvation. We're not worthy. We don't deserve Jesus. But God loves us so much that by his grace, he made a way for us to be saved. He made a way for us to have fellowship with him. So accept Jesus' free gift of salvation, that free ticket into heaven today. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Accept the words of the gospel you just heard. Apply the words to your life. Allow the words to change you. And we always follow the gospel with the dire warning of Jesus' is imminent return. Because right now you can personally know who Jesus is. But one thing is for sure. The Bible is clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. You need to turn to Jesus today. You do not have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. Because tomorrow might be one day too late. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now of why you haven't came to Jesus yet. Maybe you don't think that you're good enough saying you don't know what I've done. Maybe you're waiting until your children grow up and move out of the house. Maybe you're waiting until you're financially secure in your life. Whatever excuse it may be, you do not put Jesus off any longer. Because there's no guarantee you will live to see tomorrow. And trust me, if you die before you come to Jesus, then when you're standing before God, it's not going to matter whatever excuses you make. Why he haven't came to Jesus yet. So turn to Jesus today while you still have the time. Because today is the day of salvation. So if you would like to be saved, we have the description box down below. A link to the ABCs of salvation and a sample prayer. But these are just templates. An outline of what you can say to be saved. You see there's no magic words. There's no repeat after me. The words are not even important. But if you truly want to be saved, all it needs to be is, is a sincere prayer. A sincere cry out from your heart that you cannot do this on your own, that you need a Savior. And what you're doing is you are admitting that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. You're admitting that you need Jesus. You believe in who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross. You confess Jesus as Lord. You repent of your sins, which means you're turning away from your sins. You're turning away from that old life. You're having a change of heart, a change of mind. And whatever you may be battling right now, if you trust in the Lord and let him, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Accept the gospel, apply the words to your life, allow them to change you, allow him to change you. Then the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you and change you if you let him. The Holy Spirit can take away whatever you may be struggling with right now. All you have to do is let him. Well, I pray you got something out of this, but never take my word for it. Don't look to anyone else what they have to say, but go to the source for yourself. Because no one on this earth has the answers. Whether it's the most famous preacher or the smartest person in the world, they don't have the answers. Only God does. And you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking random verses or doing a Google search. 
listen to someone read or preach for a few minutes, you're not going to get the full picture. It won't even scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. So read the Bible for yourself. The, you see, the Bible will strengthen you, help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, struggle. Whatever hard time you're going through right now, the Bible will help you get through it. In the description box, we have several links to read the Bible. You see, the Bible is our roadmap. The Bible is our GPS. The Bible is our lantern. The Bible is our flashlight. Or whatever analogy you want to use, but the Bible will help you to navigate through this crazy, darkening world that we're living in right now. So read the Bible for yourself. And if you need prayer today, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement. We want to pray for you, pray for your needs. And if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We would love to praise Jesus right along with you for what the Lord is doing in your life. Well, I pray you got something out of the video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow if the Lord tarries, or we'll see you in the clouds. Look up. Our redemption is drawing nigh. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Let's go.